Hey everybody, Dave Lindbergh, DB Enterprises in Hong Kong today. Wanted to give you a little bit overview of the different uh, technologies that are available to add waterproofing or environmental uh, moisture protection to your electronic products. Um, so a lot of people see IPX4, IP68, sweat proof on the box. So what does that mean and how do you achieve it? And why does DB choose to uh, promote uh, Nanoflow X over these other solutions? Let's, let's weigh in on the subject. So uh, basically, uh, in, in one section, there's what we call mechanical seals or barriers to protection. So a, like a submarine, you put something around it and water doesn't get in. Um, so easier said than done. So with, uh, there's two parts to it. There's rubber gaskets, which you join uh, things together and then you have a rubber seal in between and you, you, you bond them. Um, rubber seals need to be done with the high precision tools and typically high quality rubber um, the high precision tools do add cost and then the high quality rubber does add cost. Now depending if it's a consumer product you can sometimes get away with lower costs because they usually last two years but if it's a commercial or industrial type product you're going to need uh, better quality rubber uh, that has more durability. Um, now with ultrasonic welds and, and bonding of ABS materials for example in like a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphone um, ABS plastic uh, is a porous material, a lot of people don't realize this, but actually the plastics uh, are absorbent of moisture. So um, typically in the manufacturing process there's an assembly factory and then a sub-supplier supplying plastics to these guys. Now, especially in South China here, um, if you inject your plastic in one facility and then it takes a few weeks uh, and it ends up at the assembly factory where they're finally ultrasonic welding the housing over top of the electronics, uh, there will be some moisture that's penetrated there and so you basically get micro cracks in that gap between the two plastics, the join. And so over time, if it's a Bluetooth headphone for example, sweat will leak in and you'll have a failure. So in a lot of instances, mechanical seals just isn't enough to protect you. Now, secondly, there's classic conformal coatings. So uh, these are things, if anybody's worked in white goods, you've seen them potting of glue. or or in automotive potting of electronics where they basically take the electronics and they just dip it in a glue and it becomes basically this brick of protection. Um, that's, that's kind of one way to do it. And there's other kind of sprays or epoxies that go over things to protect them. Um, issues with this is it's kind of a toxic process so it's not very well welcomed by brands and factories nowadays. And secondly, you can't rework it. Once it's inserted in there, that's it. There's no more uh, rework of the electronics if there's a problem with it later. Um, so next next section would be what we call ultra thin coatings or uh, there's plasma vapor deposition and there's also perylene in this uh, category. Now the problem with this category is that there's a high cost to entry. So these machines are somewhere between three to five hundred thousand dollars for a machine and then you buy the chemistry. So while the variable costs are low the fixed cost of that capital expense of that machinery is quite high. So unless you're a major brand uh, and shipping millions of units a year, uh, you're never going to get into this game. Now, while the technologies do work fairly well, there is uh, an issue operationally in terms of it is a batch process. So you load, say, mobile phone 500 motherboards into a chamber. If you want IPX7 uh, level protection, those processes with perylene or with the plasma fluorocarbon type coatings, those take four to six hours to coat the boards. So you can imagine a mobile brand that even does a million phones a year, uh, you're gonna have a bottleneck in production uh, and also just that time uh, in, in operationally bogs things down. You can only afford so many machines, so it becomes an operational barrier uh, in addition to the other cost issues. Um, so finally, uh, and this explains a lot of this all sums up to why we promote the VO2, V2 solution and there's a V5 and a V3, V3 solution, sorry, from uh, Nanoflow X. So it's basically a very simple solution. So a lot of the traditional conformals of epoxies and stuff like this, they're too thick. They don't form uh, well onto the printed circuit board assembly. So Nanoflow X is very easy. You just dip it in a chemistry solution that's uh, defined by your requirements, whether it's IPX4 or IP68, we recommend which solution to use. And so it's a dip and a heat cure. So the total process in line is roughly five to eight minutes, depending on your requirements. 
So, and there's very little uh, in capital expenditure costs. There's a, maybe a fixture for dipping, or if you want to go really advanced, there's automation uh, where you can have a robot doing the dip and then place onto a conveyor belt in a heat cure oven. So all this allows for extreme scalability, which um, like the, the batch process of the plasma and the, the uh, perylene processes, they don't really allow for. So this is a very scalable solution. And now with production, you know, starting to move around the world uh, a bit out of China into Vietnam and other places, Malay back to Malaysia, um, the ability to have a solution that could be serviced at your Vietnam facility or your China facility uh, that's consistent, reliable and very scalable and very cost effective is a real strength. So that's kind of our comparison uh, of the different technologies that are out there for waterproofing. Uh, DB has been doing waterproofing on electronics for major brands such as Logitech, JBL, uh, and others since 2011. So if you want to know more, want to know how to protect your device from uh, water, sweat, or other damage, uh, just hit us an email and uh, we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. So if you like what we're doing for these videos, please hit like and subscribe down below. All right, hope everybody's staying safe and y'all have a good day. Thanks, bye-bye.